The bus crashed. Michael Myers escaped. He'll return to Haddonfield, his home. Hello, everybody. Hey, how's it going? And welcome to the first of about four videos that me and Isaiah are going to make. I'm Space Tree Studios, or you can just call me William, and introduce yourself, sir, even though I said your name already. <laughs> I'm Isaiah the Vargas, uh, uh, 1117. You can also call me Isaiah Vargas. And uh, it is awesome to be talking about this movie. I mean... You can also call uh, us huge fucking nerds. Yes, we are huge nerds. <laughs> so we are talking um, about Halloween 2018. It came out on the 19th. We Both of us saw it on the 20th. Yep. So uh, we're recording yeah, this a few know, days afterwards just because that's when we got to meet up. But yeah, so this is our kind of first impressions. We've had some time to sit down and think about it. But yeah, uh, yeah. overall, Isaiah, did you like the movie? Yeah, I thought it was... Um, I, well, here's the thing. When I first heard they were doing uh this kind of movie i i didn't know if it was like a reboot or a sequel and then i found it was a sequel and i was like okay this could be cool i didn't meet jamie lee curtis this is back but i was also yeah. kind of iffy because it's the same people who did a uh, purge and happy death day and i was like oh come on uh, the first i heard about the film was like when they first showed out that Im magazine image over a year ago of jamie lee curtis standing in the house with michael peeking out like oh they're making a new halloween okay that's cool i guess yeah and then, like, later I found other things about it. I was iffy on uh, about two first when hearing Bloomhouse, because at that point I just knew them from The Purge. But then, like, they did Get Out and stuff. And yeah, the, I did see Happy movies. Death Day, and I actually did like that movie. Well, that's funny, because one of the trailers that happened... Yeah, they showed the Halloween sequel. Was Happy Death Day 2. Which, fun fact, uh, the trailer for Happy Death Day 2 to you uh, spoils the ending of the first one. Yeah, it does. So don't watch that trailer if you don't want to be spoiled for Happy Death Day 1. I mean, who hasn't seen Happy Death Day at this point? <laughs> I mean, I only Come saw about a month or two before I saw this. But anyway. Um, so yeah, I was I was a little skeptical, but honestly, watching it for the first time, I liked it. I thought it was a, a, a great follow-up to the original. It's, yeah, I it's actually kind of funny because the only really good sequels of Halloween we got are Halloween 2, Halloween H2O, and this one. And they're all, they all tell separate timelines. Isn't that crazy? Well, the only Halloween that I've seen otherwise is the original. I haven't seen any of the others by this point. And really, the only one I really have any interest in seeing would be the third one just because it's not a Halloween movie. Yeah, honestly, the third one kind of gets a bad rap but it's also not really that great of a movie it's Halloween mostly just because of how different it is from the rest of people expected michael myers at this point because like this was firmly in the 80s at that point at that point jason kept coming back freddy kept coming back uh yeah chucky didn't exist yet but whatever well the face then, was back uh, halloween 4 was okay halloween 5 6 resurrection and the two rob zombie versions were all garbage and honestly, I'm also really glad that we got a sequel that doesn't continue off the Rob Zombie version. It goes back to its original roots. It's a great mindset, honestly. So uh, I'm glad it went back to the original and uh, it paid off, definitely. I think they just, uh, they really, they honestly kind of nailed it on the head. I can't believe a long-running series about a monster keeps going back to the original film every time they want to do a new one as to not confuse the continuity and to keep making more of them. I've never heard that before. So, um, but there's also a few fair, prob uh, fair problems with it too, but we'll get to those in a second, so... Uh, yeah, uh, spoiler-free first, so you're just gonna do like general yep, impressions. We'll be We'll be letting you know when we're going to switch over to spoilers, but for right now, we are spoiler-free. 
So um, I guess for those of you who somehow don't know the plot of this movie, um, Jamie Lee Curtis returns to, as Laurie Strode, and uh, basically it's been 40 years since the original, and Michael Myers has been uh, is held in uh, Smith's Grove, and he's about to be transferred. Now, this is actually one of the biggest problems I have with the movie, the fact that uh, even after the original's chilling cliffhanger, apparently they just caught him immediately afterwards. Like, that, well, that, kind of, that kind of dismisses the whole chilling ending of the original. Like, did he get away? Where's he going? Like, I mean, he of, fell out of a building with multiple gunshot wounds. He's not getting very far. Still, it kind of erases that, like, you know, that mystery, the chillingness. I feel like, um, I just, I don't know. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but it just, it was a little iffy for me. Well, like, how else could you really do it, though? Because, like, they need to have an excuse for why Michael has been gone for 40 years. True, true, I guess. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, Lori Strode has been, uh, basically traumatized by... And, uh, it's kind of alienated her life because she's mostly been focusing on, like... I'm preparing for when Michael's gonna return. He's gonna return eventually, and fortunately, it's had a very bad uh, impact on her life. She's very distant from her daughter and her granddaughter, and she's just kind of, uh, kind of keeping to herself, but she doesn't really care because she just worries about killing Michael. And unfortunately, her fears come true because Michael, of course, breaks from captivity and uh, goes on another killing spree. Right before Halloween. Yeah. Who would have guessed? <laughs> yep. Like, what What great time. So, um, I guess, let me just say right now, and I don't think this is any secret, obviously, the biggest, uh, the greatest thing about this movie is Jamie Lee Curtis. Like, yeah. everyone knows it. Her performance as Laurie Strode is fantastic. It's just, it's great to see her returning to the role. Honestly, it's a little more triumphant than uh, H2O, in my opinion. Well, because, I, well, I like that movie fine. Like, this one is, like, it's been so long since we've seen her play Rory Strode that it's just great to see her come back. From what I heard Especially for H2O, I, the point was that she was trying to avoid Michael the whole time, right? Like, yeah, she was the, still, like, the scared... She was, to... she was a lot younger, so she was more scared of him at that point, just trying to get away from the killer. Whereas this point, this, now it's much, it's much just, more time has passed. She's tougher... She wants to beat the shit out of this guy. Yep, this one, she's like... Now, granted, um, Lori gets a lot of great... It's not, like, Lori has a great fight. Like, this one... Let's, uh, save the know, fight for the like spoiler so section, because I think we can't really talk about that properly yeah. until that point. Yeah. So, uh, anyways... So, Lori Millie Curtis is great. Uh, some of the other actors are fine. I thought the... I thought the daughter was a pretty good actor, and uh, honestly, the doctor obviously was giving very Dr. Loomis fine. Uh, they make vibes. a joke about that in the movie, too. It's like, oh, you're the new Loomis. Like, when that line came up, people in my theater actually laughed. Yeah, because it's basic that's basically it. He's basically Dr. Loomis, but because Donald Pleasance has been dead for years now, God rest his soul. Um, I they just assumed they'd have, to... like, someone else play the role, but, like, oh, no, they, okay, so, like, they're going realistic, no, he has to be dead. I felt it was very smart that they actually said that Dr. Loomis is dead, didn't try to make, like, any excuse. Gee, they Dr. Said, Loomis, no. you must be 120 years old! How do you do it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, in my day! They actually dug up the corpse of Donald Pleasance and puppeted him around. It's actually <laughs> a biology statue... Biology, biology skeleton in a lab coat in a clipboard. <laughs> now, That's Michael, happening. how does this feel? Oh, right, you um, don't talk. Hmm. Um, I thought Michael was was great in this movie. Like, I kind of hated. Well, there were some good parts and some bad parts. Honestly, I, I guess I'll start with the bad parts. Honestly, Michael sometimes felt a little too Jason, for my opinion. There was one kill in particular I think was very much a Voorhees kill. It was a very, it looked like it belonged. I, I think I know what you're talking about. It I think I know which one you, we'll get set for spoiler, but yeah, there was like one kill. I was like, okay, that's a, that's a Jason move. 
like but also michael didn't go around like killing every single person he saw yeah because like more people that just got in his way like and the like the one he kills like a lot of time that's more so a necessity than it is like because he wants to like it's not even until like much later when he's all like once he actually gets in the neighborhood he's only killing certain people that he thinks he has to like the pe actual no, targets I think the reason they did this was probably just because they wanted, uh, you know, like, it's a modern slasher movie. Yeah, you can get away with a lot more now. But, um, yeah, I just felt that was a little too much, but it wasn't that big of a problem. I thought yeah. Michael, uh, looked really good. I thought he moved just like how Michael Myers should, very, like, yeah, like, hypnotizingly. Like, it was, it was really creepy. And I do and just want to say, because, like... When you really think about it, Michael Myers doesn't really have much of a thing other than his like look, and like you get that in the, his persona too. He's his he's the shape. Like mm -hmm. you have Jason who's known for like the hockey mask and using a machete and like the crazy kills he can come up with. You have Freddy who like dream powers he can do basically anything. Pennywise can shape shift. Chucky oh, is a doll so he can play it's incognito cool. and trick people. Whips. You have Leatherface, who's a complete maniac and a cannibal. Michael doesn't really have much of a thing otherwise, so it's like, well, how do you really make like, just a knife fresh? So it's like, to a degree, you kind of have to like start borrowing other elements if you want to like keep updating to him. Um, there's definitely... Oh, we'll get to this in uh, spoilers, but there's a lot of uh, references that... Uh, honestly, I was kind of... a. Uh, they didn't really feel too nail on the head, but uh, we'll talk about those when we get over to spoilers. Uh, I'm assuming that's talking to like references to the past films, right? Yeah. Like I feel like okay, again we saw like the first film, but like I feel like the references in this one, like you're only really gonna catch if like a diehard Halloween fan. Like they're not yeah. like like they're not like hitting you over the head with them. Just like hey, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah, like. Even, yeah, like, the most kind obvious one I kind of miss just because, like, it's still kind of, like, a generic Halloween thing anyway. Which, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm just going to say because I don't really think it's much of a spoiler. They have the uh, masks from Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, in it. Which, like, the yeah. Silver Shannon, like, Pumpkin and Witch masks. And, like, to be mm -hmm. fair, those are just, like, Pumpkin and Witch masks. Like, I wouldn't even have noticed that if they didn't tell me in the credits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what else is there to talk about that's not spoilers? Um... um I just uh, I thought the music was really good. In yeah, movie. like the music. I mean, uh, John, John Carpenter returned to do the music, and that was one of their smartest choices. They use the, the Halloween music. theme really well. They have like multiple it's versions of it playing. Effectively, but but like some of the like the chase music and like I I also compliment the film for actually having some like of suspense that don't have any music in them. Like it yeah. kind of gets that creepy feeling like. I don't know. I just I thought the music was one of the best things in this movie. It just sounded so good and so creepy. Yeah. Oh, another I thing that's really good movies. though, the camera work in the movie. Yeah. Like I think you know exactly what scene I'm talking about. They use it for one of the trailers, but like it's much longer than the actual film. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the best scenes in a slasher film, really. Yeah. Honestly, I would agree. But um. It's this really long tracking shot you saw in the second trailer when he like goes into like the shed in the kitchen and stabs the lady. That it goes on for like another like minute or two after that, and it's really well done because like that matches like Halloween very well because like they did stuff just like that in the original film, right? Mhm. Mm yeah. So they they nailed it here. Yep. I just yeah. Anyway, um. I don't know, I think that's it for spoiler free. So, uh, uh, so before we get into spoilers, so yeah, I say I recommend the film. I don't think it's anything revolutionary, but like, I don't really, I wasn't really expecting anything like huge. Just don't go in and expecting like this super huge, amazing monster yeah, movie. It's... Like, obviously, you're gonna be disappointed at them, but like, it's a really good horror film, so I recommend it. Yep, I would definitely, I would say the same. It's a great movie to see around this time of year. It's a, it's a good follow up. Uh, not like spectacular, but it's definitely for what it is. It's a pretty good entry in the franchise. It's refreshing. Uh, All three and, leads uh, are female. Support women actors. And hopefully, honestly, I'm hoping that this uh, 
starts to bring the slasher genre back because I feel like that's a well, dying it's kind of on the rise part. already because you have it part two coming out soon because the first one did so well. Uh, Chucky's coming back too because he had Curse and Colt. Didn't like yeah. Curse too much, but Colt I thought was pretty good. Uh, Colt was good, and I liked. Uh, I actually kind of like Curse. But, I like the yeah. the beginning of Curse. Yeah, I just thought Curse was a uh, really atmospheric. But uh, anyway, guys, so that's it for spoilers. Uh, so if you haven't seen the movie, it's I would recommend stopping free. the video now and you go out and see it. Unless um, you just don't care, then keep watching. Yep. So uh, now on to spoilers. Um, so okay, one we. One of the biggest problems I have with this movie is the doctor's uh, sudden like I'm evil now. It uh, was scene. kinda foreshadowed a little bit, only a oh, little. Oh, it, but. It's, not I'm not much. saying it's a very good twist because it's just kind of like, okay, well that just kind of happened out of necessity, I guess, to keep the movie it kinda, going. It just happens. There's no... Order, they like, vaguely no foreshadow with his, like, talking about, like, how he's, like, going to Michael's mind because of how obsessed he is with Michael. It's like, I wonder what it must feel to kill like that. Which, granted, still, you're probably not going to think anything about that, but then when he does, like, oh, okay, he's nuts. Yeah, it makes no sense in my opinion. It just comes out of, even though it's vaguely foreshadowed, it still comes out of nowhere. They need and an excuse to be able to kill both the cop even, and the doctor. It doesn't even stick around for that long. Like, he gets killed very soon after. Yeah, the moment Michael and, wakes up, he just gets out of the car and rips him out and stomps on his head. Which, yeah, that was, that was kill, the Voorhees kill. That was the kill that felt right out of the That, that was a goddamn Voorhees stomp. <laughs> But even then, like, and especially when he puts on the mask, I'm like, oh, come on. That's like, this is horror comedy now. Like, when but he did that, I was like, they better not make him a kill the main killer now, because that'd be lame. Yeah, it's... Because then, like, really Lori dumb. hasn't even fought him yet. You gotta keep him alive for that. It was really dumb. I just... I did not like it. Uh, there was one more thing I wanted to say about this okay. doctor scene. I doctor? can't remember. Dr. Tumas? It was just, it was just like, I, I didn't get it. I really didn't get it. It was kind of just out of nowhere, really. It just, it didn't go anywhere. So, oh, no. What I was going to say was, um, now this could have worked if, um, not only if they kept him alive for longer, but if, um, they kind of foreshadowed a lot more and maybe said, maybe he's the reason the bus crash because he was the only I one alive. I think they kind of foreshadowed that too, because, like, I was wondering, like, is he even supposed to be on that bus at all? Because he was kind of yeah, hiding. But, but they never really, like, confirmed They never it, one way said they... what caused the bus to crash. Yeah. Like, for all we know, it's like Michael just, like, overpowered everyone on the bus and got out. Then again, why are all the... Which, also, the all the other guys that are on the bus got loose, and then they never bring it up again. Yeah. So there's just a bunch of maniacs walking around Haddonfield right now, besides Michael, and no one notices. Also, um, I was... Some of the kills, uh, one of them in particular, uh, I was very surprised that Michael actually killed the kid in this movie. Like, I was just yeah. like... Yeah. When I saw they killed the dead... Yeah, like, that's obvious, but, like, I thought he was just gonna be, like, in the first movie where he just, like, scares the kid, gets in the car, and drives off, but, like, when he... Which, like, by the way, Michael was in captivity most down. of his entire life. How did he learn to drive? Yeah. Because, like, even the originals, like, he was still in a facility for most of his life. How did he learn to drive? And he, Loomis was just like, maybe someone gave him lessons, like... Did they give him GTA in prison? <laughs> but... I was very surprised that he killed the kid, and, like, when he, like, broke his neck, I was like, oh my god, that's, like, brutal. Um, but if some of the well, other I thought they, like, cracked actually, his spine or something, I couldn't really tell because it was a dark shot. Yeah, it was very, it was an homage to the, uh, the kill in the original with, uh, Annie in the car. Like, I, I know mean, he, like, dragged him out and got kill, away, but it was yeah. very... Yeah, because, like, okay, well, yeah, he needs to get, he needs the car to get to Haddonfield to go on the rampage for Halloween night. Yeah, and, um, another kill that 
I felt a little Jason, but I thought was cool was the the police officer whose head like you find his head and it looks like a jack o' lantern. Like yeah, that, that one was... they didn't really even focus on too much either. You just kind of see it and like, oh shit, it's a jack o' lantern now. Yeah, but honestly, that gives me the idea that Michael was just sitting. Michael just actively sitting screws butt. with everybody in this movie. Like, Michael was just sitting on his butt for a few minutes, like a five year old probably, and just making this guy's head into a jack o' lantern. Well, like, like you see other things he does, too, like when he kills uh, the best friend character, he, like, drags her into the room, sits her up, and puts a sheet over her head like a ghost. Yeah. He, like, stuffs Ray's body into a dresser drawer at one point. It's like, when did you have the time to do that? Even though your hand is bleeding, like, he's, he's actively messing with everyone, too. Yeah. Um, what's another kill I really... I really like the, the little... The little uh, kid that the babysitter is watching, like I just thought he was really funny. Yeah, One of the other he lives. I didn't like so was, that's good. I didn't really like the whole like I didn't like the whole cheating boyfriend thing. Like, that is felt, one like, thing that I'm gonna say. I think there is like some rewrites, or they just like forgot something. Yeah, Cause like he, just, he, he never, never shows up again back. after that. I he thought, cheats like, on he the girl on Allison is her name, right? Uh yeah. Yeah, he and cheats I, on Allison, and then we never see him again. I like, thought, like Michael would have showed up at some point. Yeah. And killed him. Normally, Maybe that guy dies at the end. But like, he never comes back. Either there was a rewrite and the scene got taken out, or there was just a deleted scene or something. But like, normally, that guy is supposed to die, and they forgot to kill him here. Yeah. And she, like, all that really serves is to have a reason for her to not have her phone in the end. Yeah, it's just. It was really pointless, and honestly, the whole cheating boyfriend thing is just a bad plot thing. In fact, this is the second movie I've seen this year that has that cheating boyfriend trope. The first one being Goosebumps 2. Well, I think that's just because real life sucks. But it's the same freaking cheating boyfriend cliche that we gotten before. I mean, if we're gonna complain about cliches, well, we're talking about a slasher movie here. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it, I mean, it's um, like, it's the same thing again, which, that is one thing, like, I did say, like, I didn't think it was anything revolutionary, I still thought it was good, it's just, like, we've seen this plenty of times, it's just, it, it was a good refresher to get back into the series, and I feel like they did as good as they possibly could have done this movie. Yeah, I, I felt it was good, too. Uh, um, what was I gonna I say? The final, the final, like, the climax of the movie, starting with, um... Lori getting everyone in the house and then locking everything down. Wait, actually, uh, before that, I remember there's one scene I want to talk about before we get to the end. Uh, after, like, when her and the f other friend are walking through the neighborhood to get back and take the shortcut. That is one of the most real scenes I've ever seen in a yeah. film. The drunk dude is just laying in the field and like, Sorry, man, I didn't mean to crash your yard. I'm just really yeah, drunk. He's literally talking. Th there's this girl I like. like Life sucks, just man. Standing there, like it, it's just like I was like, what is going on? Like, and what's Michael thinking right now? He was just like, am, should I do something? I was kind of hoping you would just let him live and just leave. Like, kid, you have yeah, enough just problems. Let him be awkward. Just let him sit there and be awkward. That would but it's been like so funny. But then, like, they have the motion tracking lights. They're like, I oh, know they gotta do something with that. Yeah, I honestly thought some of the jump scares were pretty effective because it wasn't always like. Blue monster pops up. Like some of them were, I don't know. Some of them, honest, in my opinion, were pretty effective. Like the motion lights, yeah, and that stuff. I like the closet. Like the closet one was spoiled in the trailers, though. Like you knew that one was coming. Yeah, but there's also a lot of scenes where Michael's like, you can see Michael working in the background, and yeah, like, the fear is just from him showing, like, getting to the person and then killing you know? And like they do show like, his face a, a just, bit in this movie too. They never focus on it, but you see it. Well, you never see it full on. You just see yeah. little glimpses. Like, well, it's also because like it doesn't really matter what he looks like either. Well, in the original movie, he gets the uh, the clothing hanger in his eye, and you see a shot of his eye, and it looks all like gross and stuff. Like, yeah, that was a great callback. So, I guess uh, the last thing we should probably talk about is the ending of the film. Which, um, yeah, is amazing. It's, 
I thought it was I thought it was really good. They actually did call back to the ending of the first one too, because like remember when Michael like knocks her out of the building and, yeah. he, and she falls down. Like, then I Michael looks the, away to hear the commotion. He looks that. back. The chime plays and Lori's gone. Yeah. Just I like in the like, original. I was in a packed theater, and when everyone saw that, everyone was like, "Oh shit." Like, I don't think anyone did that at mine, but there was this lady sitting in front of us that reacted to every jump scare and got scared. It was funny. She got scared by the DLP logo at the beginning of the movie. But once they say the... Once they saw like she had done the whole role reversal thing, everyone just like started applauding. Like, I was like, you know what? That is awesome. Because Michael is just as afraid of her as she is of him. That's yeah. That's that's why this complication is so good. I mean, it was um, forty years in the making. The whole scene with the mannequins in the dark room was actually kind of chilling. Because like I did not think he'd gonna like, be in that room at all. Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess, like, if anything, that is Michael's this thing. Really, this movie really, really bends, and that's why I think it's, it, that, that's why it's so chilling, is because there's... Can you say that again? You cut out a little bit. Just, the, I think this movie is so chilling because it's like, there's so many scenes of suspense, and there's not, it doesn't totally rely on jump scares. Yeah. I mean, so, like, I don't really think there were any, like, legit jump scares besides me, like, the motion scene. Like, mean, okay, there's yeah. a closet, in, like, behind the mannequin, but, like, I feel like everything just worked out well. It's like, it's not like the fake jump scares you see now. They sort of play that lo that long, ambient music thing, of, like, oh, something's coming, and then, boom, loud noise. Like, yeah, he no. just, like, jumps for you. There's, like, no real sharp music cues either. It's just done very naturally. Mm-hmm. And, and like the whole life. final fight itself is very well done. Lori just shoots his hand basically completely off. Like you yeah. have the mother, it gets a shot and like she fakes being scared and then shoots him right in the neck. Uh, yeah. Allison then, does like, stuff too, I think. They trap him in the basement with all the stuff and. The it's like down. you think that's gonna be like their stronghold to hide out, but no, the whole plan was getting him down there and trapping him so they could burn him. Which, also, by the way, if you think he's dead, house, didn't know. The whole house burning thing, honestly, was both, for me, both sad and also a really good, like, a really good, uh, like, it just, it kind of gave, like, subtle hints. Like, first of all, it was just sad because, you know, Lori's basically losing all her belongings, her whole house. True, like, but all those belongings were also made specifically for the point of killing Michael. Yeah, but so it's still, like, like it's she, serving its purpose she's now. Also defenseless now, like, de like she has no weapons now. She hey, Ray is gone. She has an extra bed. Yeah, true. But also, I thought it was a great visual because uh, you see the dollhouse that burns, but it looks exactly like the Myers house. So it's almost like I could, I could honestly consider her my like. I know, like everyone's like. Oh, say that God, again. You cut out. Like, I could honestly, truthfully, consider Michael dead in this movie. See, no, I would say no, that, uh, but when they shut cut back to the basement when it's burning, you do not see his body there at all. True, but I just, I like, I just want to, honestly... I mean, I don't really think they should do a direct sequel to this one, because, like, at that point, it's like, guys, come on. Also, I don't care how evil of an entity Michael is. He's six years old. He's he's not gonna get out of there. He's too he's too he's too old. He's gonna okay, get a brain. Okay, so <laughs> there was talk about what happens at the end of the credits for this movie. There's no actual post credit scene, but at the end of credits, like you do hear breathing. breathing. So it's like yeah. I think that yeah. like that could that doesn't really mean anything inherently. That could just be like the age old slasher horror movie ending of they're still here Ooh, like even movies that don't get sequels do that whole thing just like they know they're not gonna get a sequel they just do it anyway for one last scare so it's like michael will live yeah. on but i i just thought it was chilling the end credits but um also i like how they yeah. did credit him as the shape the yes. whole time i was watching this i was like they also, better credit him as the shape 
so there's nothing really to talk about the ending. Um, it was just, it was a great climax. I also, I do kind of wonder though about what that meant with Allison holding the knife. Like, is this going for like a Halloween four ending where she's going to be the killer now? Oh, I just thought it was like, that was Michael's knife that he used to kill everyone and she has it now. And it's like, they just wanted to end on the shot of the knife. I didn't I really think they were doing anything with that. I was just like, that is the knife. I guess End it could go either scene. way. Um, one more thing, I guess, before we wrap up. I do like how this movie opens with the... Uh, right, I was going to mention that, but I forgot. It opens in the style of the original, but the pumpkin starts off all rotten, but it... Uh, it inflates. Like, it Back to normal pumpkin, and then it turns into a straight-up scary jack-o'-lantern face. Yeah. Uh, that was a great way to open the movie like it, it this movie if i can describe this movie, it's call it's just a great callback like it's literally like not only great sequel but a great callback like you can tell the people who made this loved the original well like that was franchise that was all really needed to be Mm-hmm. but anyway um so i think it's a uh, fairly time to wrap up here because we've mentioned every single thing yeah um, um honestly this movie was fantastic if you're a fan of halloween or the slasher genre or you're just looking for a good horror movie this halloween uh i would definitely recommend going to see this because it's, which it's, did it's, you it's like more did you like this more or it more uh, uh the 2017 it yeah hmm <laughs> Honestly, I prefer this more because as much as I love it and I feel like it definitely did justice to the story, um, I just love your movies. And I felt that this was just a great uh, follow-up to the original, which is my favorite horror movie is Halloween, the original Halloween. So I would say this one more, but, the, but it is a close second. I think I um, might prefer it slightly more, but also I need to re-see it because I haven't seen it since last year. So I need to yeah, watch that been, again. And then, like, I need to watch it. this one again, too. Just, like, see how I really feel. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, I, uh, I do recommend the film. If you can still see it in theaters, I recommend doing that. If not, pick up on Blu-ray. Uh, it has the highest opening for a Halloween film in the entire series. Yeah. I mean... And it's, it's one of the highest box office openings like. with a movie that has three female leads. Yeah. So support it's your female actors, everybody. Yeah. Yep. So support I the queen. If you're looking for, if you're looking for a great horror movie this Halloween, and if you're a fan of the, the horror, uh, the the franchise, or just the original movie in general, go see this movie. It's fantastic. It's definitely worth the money. Um, yeah. So uh, before we leave uh, again, though, uh, one last question: favorite kill. Favorite kill. Um, honestly, I love the bathroom scene. The I just thought that was so chilling. The way he drops the teeth in the stall is like so like ugh, like that, but in a good way. So that's my favorite kill. What about you? Uh, see, I'm staring at my Jason mask right now, so I do have to go with the Voorhees stomp. As out of place as it was, that's probably yeah. still my favorite, just because of how unnecessarily violent it was. Yeah. Ugh. But I like it too. Like you see the eyeball. But anyway, guys, um, so that is it for our review of Halloween. Uh, we don't know which episode at the time of this recording. We don't know which episode will be going up next. We'll do a but, random uh, spinner. Yep, but you can expect us uh, to do another Halloween review. Like we said, we're going to be doing uh, three more reviews. So keep an eye out. Uh, we don't know which one we're doing next, one but the videos will be the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, the the early 2000s Scooby Doo quadrilogy, and uh, the something something movies. Goosebumps. Oh, the Goosebumps the Goosebumps movie. movies. Uh, the 2015 original and the brand new movie Goosebumps 2: Haunted Halloween. Well, should I gotta watch the first one, don't I? It's on uh -huh. Netflix, right? So, um, uh, it should be. Or otherwise, you can find it on uh, iTunes or whatever. Okay, I'm not spending money, but yeah. Anyway, guys. Uh, so be on the lookout for those. Uh, I think the Halloween, this video, and the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street video will be going up on William's channel, Space Tree Studios. Whoa. And the Scooby-Doo and Goosebumps videos will be going up on my channel, Isaiah the Vargas 1117. 
Uh, yeah, so thank you guys for I'll have it on the end slate, which should be appearing on screen right about now. So uh, click on those uh -huh, videos to see them. And Ooh, yeah, happy. subscribe to so, both of us. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Yep, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Take Keep a lookout for our next review, and we'll see you guys later. Take care. Woo. Michael Myers is fucking dead!